fire room. So, yeah, let me reset the timer. Um, basically, this time I will be talking about mostly do-it-yourself hardware and how to basically make your own hard hardware wallet or point-of-sale terminal or any kind of machine that can accept uh, Bitcoin and Lightning and do some action for it. Uh, and uh, in Prague, in the conference, Hacker Congress uh, Parallel Sponsor, uh, I will be presenting uh, about um, how to design a hardware wallet for Lightning Network, such that you can plug it to your node and remove all your secrets into your hardware device, uh, and uh, such that your funds are never exposed to the fault. Uh, but uh, here it is more about do-it-yourself, and uh, actually I want to prove to you that it is not that hard uh, to make your own thing uh, with uh, microcontrollers that are currently uh, on the market. Uh, so, basically, first I want to talk about uh, microcontrollers in general. So, I have to say that the presentation is a little bit technical, I mean, pretty technical actually, uh, but uh, I think that, uh, well, we will go through it and uh, you will see, maybe you will fall asleep, sorry. Uh, okay, so first about the microcontrollers. Why do you need microcontrollers in general? Uh, so it is a mm, not a very technical thing. Yeah. Um, the idea is that uh, you have a pretty uh, well. You have computers. You have your phones. You have Raspberry Pi, for instance. You have everything like that. Uh, but the problem there is that they are pretty complicated. They are designed to make a lot of different things like uh, browsing cats on the YouTube, uh, checking your Twitter. Uh, Twitter feed uh, and everything else, uh, and so if you want to uh, use that uh, for uh, storing your private keys, it is really a bad idea, but I suppose uh, Trezor guys already talked about that, uh, but also there is another use case for microcontrollers compared to normal computers, uh, that they are much more reliable uh, because uh, microcontroller basically is a tiny computer that runs the same C program over and over again and there is nothing else but this uh, program. So basically you can design something that is extremely reliable, low power, low cost, uh, does whatever you want, uh, and uh, um, well, basically in all the senses uh, better than a general purpose computer. Uh, so that is why hardware wallets appeared, uh, but uh, what I'm missing right now is, well, we don't have any hardware devices that are not hardware wallets uh, around. So you can't, for instance, go and uh, buy Coca-Cola uh, downstairs or somewhere uh, with Bitcoin or Lightning. Well, uh, and you... Sorry, I will just mute it. And uh, basically, if we have more hardware that accepts Bitcoin, uh, more machines, then uh, well, maybe it will uh, lead to the Bitcoin adoptions uh, more, more wider than Bitcoin adoption. Uh, so, microcontrollers in general are pretty nice, but you probably think that they're extremely hard to uh, kind of work with. So, you need to solder something, you need to uh, install a huge toolbox on your computer such that you can program it and so on. So, it was actually the case, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, uh, but then for people that are uh, not uh, extremely knowledgeable in the field of the microcontrollers and uh, programming, uh, there appeared a platform, uh, Arduino, uh, and uh, recently there appeared another one, uh, IRM Embed, uh, that are extremely user-friendly. Uh, so basically what they did uh, is, first, they got rid of all the uh, hardware RAM, they developed uh, boards that are like this, that you can just buy, plug it with a USB uh, cable to a computer, install one uh, program, the IDE, uh, and start writing the code and just click the button and it uploads and it runs. Uh, so uh, at least you don't need to solder anything anymore. Uh, well, if you want to extend it, uh, there is also a large ecosystem of extension boards that you basically take uh, the microcontroller, let's say you want a touch screen, uh, you just uh, put them together and the idea of this uh, company was that for different boards you can have multiple different shields uh, that are all compatible with a particular pinout. So then basically you just buy uh, what you need, you put together all this huge sandwich and then you have a hardware that just works. Uh, 
Uh, another nice thing, and actually uh, after Arduino in, I don't know, five years or more, uh, the ARM embed appeared and they just took the same form factor. So basically the extension boards, so this is an extension board on top of Arduino, uh, that uh, are compatible with these new boards. So you can just take this one, develop for the in and plug to another one. So uh, now it is uh, pretty nice to develop uh, hardware uh, that does what you want. Uh, and initially, as I said, it started with a, uh, with this board that uh, you plug to a computer and uh, you do it. And you see that uh, the microcontroller here is actually pretty large and in the deep package or the old style of thing. Uh, so it is actually 8 bits, it is running only at 16 megahertz, so it's not powerful at all. Uh, but on the other hand, if you want to open your garage door, for instance, for your car, uh, then you don't need to put Raspberry Pi in there, uh, or a personal computer with some cabling around, right? So you can just take this 16 megahertz thing, uh, connect two cables to your uh, motor on the garage door, and it will open whenever you uh, press the button or uh, I don't know. Uh, afterwards, uh, when the microcontrollers became more powerful and uh, the price was basically uh, going down, uh, they developed more boards in the same form factor and also in the different ones. Uh, this guy is already a 32-bit microcontroller uh, and for 8 megahertz, uh, this is what I'm holding here. Uh, these guys are uh, for wearable stuff, so we basically can design a smart uh, costume that, uh, I don't know, tracks your uh, fitness or whether you wake up or not. Um, and uh, then, recently they also released uh, the same microcontroller plus FPGA, uh, such that you can do even more, like already, uh, sending data to HDMI port or uh, capturing data from the camera, so more and more powerful, uh, but still uh, can be used with the same uh, simple IDE and uh, one button click upload. Uh, then another company uh, started working in the same field and also developed um, boards, like for instance the Cortex M4 from uh, Adafruit is already 100. 20 megahertz, the ESP32 is even more, and already has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, uh, and uh, the, the bottom one is TNC, uh, I think uh, I just uh, typed the wrong thing. Uh, but basically, different companies are doing boards that are working with the same uh, IDE on your computer. Uh, then, about, uh, they also did a great job about uh, changing how to program stuff, so the idea was that you take a, a pretty intelligent person that may be never programmed and uh, give him a bunch of manuals that he can read and then he could start immediately writing something simple. So here is how it was the old way. Uh, kind of if you are programming on the EVR, EVR exec, uh, directly. So you need to set frequency, you need to do this random, uh, not random, but uh, magic uh, um, names of the ports and uh, all other fancy iterations, so it is not very user-friendly. Well, it is efficient and it is pretty close to assembler, but it is not very user-friendly. So, uh, they developed the, uh, and the library around it, uh, hiding all this nasty stuff under uh, readable and understandable functions, like uh, if I want to blink with an LED with a lamp, for instance, uh, what I do, I just said that, okay, uh, digital pin 0 will be output and then I go uh, either apply voltage or uh, apply uh, 0 and basically it will start blinking. So much more readable than it was before, uh, plus uh, they started developing a lot of um, libraries and uh, using C++ and uh, C uh, that uh, uses all this object-oriented programming uh, style says that it is easy to program. Uh, about the extension boards, there are really plenty. So for instance, uh, I will get to that uh, in a minute, but imagine that you are not happy about Trezor and Ledger, and you want something custom. Uh, like, uh, for example, uh, such that your private key is stored on the NFC card, uh, and uh, when you uh, put it to your device, this device is able to read it and then sign a transaction. 
uh, plus it can do it only somewhere in the middle of the uh, woods in the some secret uh, place tracked by the GPS. Uh, so obviously uh, treasure and pleasure will never do this uh, because it is great. Uh, but uh, try to talk to early adapters and real hodlers uh, that hold lots of bitcoins. They are really, really crazy. I mean that uh, storing um, uh, bitcoins in the 7 of 11 multi-signature, transferring the data uh, via audio modem or uh, with the QR codes or uh, anything else. So I mean that uh, the more uh, bitcoins you have, more paranoid you become. And uh, you don't want to rely on the decision, decisions that uh, the hardware wallet guys uh, decided is good. Uh, you maybe want to go further, or maybe you want to make something more convenient. Like, for instance, uh, you take a large DFT screen, you add Wi-Fi such that uh, this thing can connect actually to the internet, or whatever you want. Uh, well, uh, or you want to use some custom scripts. For instance, you want to make a transaction to the address that uh, you will be able to spend from only after January next year. So the time of contract. Uh, also can do that uh, here, for instance, and it will actually show you the information if you program it, then it will show you the information uh, that is necessary, that it is indeed your public key and uh, the timeline. So, uh, the idea here is, uh, actually I had to go to this slide for that. Uh, you can do any kind of hardware wallet, uh, the only thing is you should be careful with uh, the security, right? Because Arduino, for instance, by default, is not secure at all. And actually, if you upload the firmware to it, you can easily read it out uh, and change it and so on. So, uh, you need to do a few uh, precautions, but in general it is possible. Uh, for example, uh, here I have a board that I wanted to try for a long time, but didn't try yet. Uh, this is for Embed, not for Arduino, but um, uh, yeah, it has a, uh, actually a pretty secure microcontroller there. So uh, it is not a general purpose like Trezor use uh, or Ledger in one of the parts. It is not a secure element, it is more powerful, so it can actually control the TFT screen for instance, because in the Ledger design what you have, you have a general purpose microcontroller that talks to the secure element. Uh, and the secure element doesn't have control of the display, so you kind of have by default the man in the middle, the microcontroller. Uh, so uh, here the microcontroller is uh, a little bit more secure, it has uh, all kind of mechanism against the hardware attacks. Uh, so for instance uh, there is an attack, a differential power analysis, when the microcontroller signs uh, you analyze the power that it is con uh, consuming and then from this you can derive some information about your product. Uh, here uh, they um, add extra noise to this uh, power consumption such that it is uh, harder to extract the key. Uh, and all other things like the watchdog against uh, time and uh, uh, clock and voltage glitches and uh, other things. Uh, so you still can do by yourself a pretty secure hardware. Unfortunately, I didn't do it yet. I hope that we will develop it at some point and actually uh, you will be able just to run the sketch on the uh, board like this and uh, it will be um, pretty secure. Uh, but today I want to talk about the other part uh, that actually uh, if you want to uh, use this kind of hardware for uh, any kind of machines like uh, the uh, vending machine, or uh, I wanted to really when wanted to make a demo a beer dispenser where you can pay with the widening because it's a toggle fest, right? Uh, but uh, unfortunately, um, generating invoices took a little bit longer than that, and so I prepared much easier demo, more like about uh, blinking with uh, with a lamp. Uh, but uh, still, uh, if you have a little bit more time than than I had, I finished this one like uh, a few hours ago and I'm not sure that it will work, so uh, then you can actually do a beer dispenser, a 3D printer, a, uh, Airbnb door lock for instance where you pay with the lightning and then you uh, request an action. Uh, well, the same with Bitcoin, but with Bitcoin payments really suck because uh, 
uh, you have to wait for 10 minutes, right? And if you want to, if you have to wait for 10 minutes during the Oktoberfest to get a cup of beer, well, that's pretty bad user experience. Uh, so lightning is actually a new uh, nice thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, so what I'm talking about is uh, I uh, started as a pet project, a hobby project, like half a year ago, a library for Arduino that can do different Bitcoin stuff. And uh, now I'm um, uh, refactoring it slightly and also adding uh, lightning support. Uh, and the idea that there will be a full lightning library at some point. Uh, but uh, basically, if you want to try to do something with Bitcoin on the hardware like this, then uh, using uh, the library you should be able to. Well, it's not really uh, production ready yet, so it's more like in pre 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 alpha um, stage, but uh, still, uh, what we can do, uh, we can do basically transaction signing, parsing, uh, custom scripts, uh, private public keys, HD keys, mnemonics with password right to the treasure do, um, multi-signature, um, well, basically, more or less, uh, everything you want except blocks. I didn't include blocks yet, so you can't uh, really parse blocks and uh, provide the medical proofs. Uh, but uh, should appear soon. Uh, so, for example, uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but basically this, uh, how many lines of code, I don't know, uh, is a preparation of the transaction uh, and signing it. Uh, for the transaction, what you need, you need uh, to reference to the previous output uh, of the of certain transaction, and in this case, this transaction output zero, uh, and then you need to define uh, addresses or so output scripts uh, where you are sending money to. Uh, so here it is actually uh, just transaction inputs and the hash and the index. Uh, then we define transaction outputs. Uh, then we put them together in the transaction, then we sign, and bam, we get a signed transaction. So, uh, not really hard, uh, I hope. I mean, I wrote it, so for me it is definitely not hard. Uh, but uh, we tried to write a demo of the simple hardware wallet that works with Electron. Uh, it's like uh, including the user interface, so basically uh, there what you have uh, is the mini, well, the small, smallish uh, Arduino like this and then already a screen uh, with three buttons so, and SD card. So basically you can make from this either a cold card that can sign transaction completely offline or uh, a normal wallet that you plug with the USB. Uh, so uh, the hardware wallet that works with Electron took like 250 lines of code. Uh, so not that much and should be pretty easy. Um, yeah, these are the examples, uh, and I hope you like the idea, uh, and now I want to switch to the demo. I decided it is boring to show what I already done, so I uh, came up with a uh, pretty crazy idea uh, that I was developing over the weekend and uh, a few days afterwards. Uh, so, the demo is Batman as a service. Uh, so, uh, imagine I'm Batman, and we are living in the nearest future where Bitcoin will take over the world, and so uh, it is really problematic to, uh, well, kind of, uh, Batman uh, has financial difficulties and decided to go commercial. <laughs> um, so, uh, the idea is that uh, across the Gotham City, he puts the bad signals, uh, that people, uh, if they are in trouble, can turn on for a small payment. Uh, and then the villain that is uh, doing the grinder actually also can go to this turn on uh, bad signal and turn it off for another small payment. Uh, so ideally it is not that hard. Uh, you have... A, uh, and yeah, obviously there's lightning, because 10 minutes delay, they are really crazy. Especially if you are waiting for 6 confirmation, then it is even worse. Uh, so the idea is um, this, so we have a Bruce Wayne Lightning node uh, that uh, is hosted somewhere in the cloud 
Uh, and then we have this hardware device, because obviously on Arduino you don't want to run the full lightning node, because uh, they are not made, made for that, they are not so powerful. Uh, and then the guy comes to this bad signal, scans the invoice with the QR code, uh, then a quick reminder of how lightning works. Uh, basically, uh, he found the route to the lightning nodes that he gets from this invoice, uh, and uh, the, uh, tries to pay, and how uh, then he gets back the confirmation of the payment that is the secret. So basically, the invoice uh, has a few data fields. So first, the uh, the hash uh, of the secret, uh, so such that uh, basically, if you know the secret that hashes to this value, then you can have a confirmation of the payment. Uh, the amount and the signature. The signature helps to also determine the uh, the public key of the node that you are sending to. Uh, so it is pretty nice. It is not really used in Bitcoin, but actually from the signature and from the message you can derive the public key. You don't need to put the public key on chain anywhere. It's just more convenient to put it there to save some computation power. Uh, so then uh, we do the payment, we get the secret back, and we kind of pay it. Now we need to um, tell the hardware device that uh, the invoice was paid. So the simple way is if we have internet connection and we have Wi-Fi everywhere in, around the city, uh, then what we can do, we can just uh, ask the lightning node for the invoice, show it on the screen, uh, wait while the user pays, and then also from the node we can get the program confirmation that it is paid. But then it is kind of boring, it is a, a normal uh, client-server conversation and uh, nothing about Bitcoin and Lightning actually there. Uh, so it is much more interesting if you don't have like uh, this bad signal are in the bad uh, regions of the city, districts of the city, so uh, internet is pretty crappy there, and so we don't have internet connection here. Uh, then what we can do, uh, we can make sure that this lightning node and uh, our hardware device share the same secret uh, that is used to generate, well, this secret. Uh, and then this guy can make an invoice with the hash. Uh, the lightning node, even though it never talks uh, to the uh, hardware device, uh, knows how to derive the secret for this particular hash and can back and send back the secret. And then the user can uh, just either dial in or pass the secret as a confirmation to the hardware device. Um, one short uh, notice that uh, this shared secret between the uh, lightning node and the hardware device uh, doesn't control any funds. So the idea of the lightning is that you have uh, multiple different secrets that are used for different purposes. Uh, in particular, uh, there is a secret that is used to derive all the uh, Bitcoin addresses for on-chain funds in the Lightning. Uh, a completely different, separate secret uh, that is used for updating the channels. Uh, and then uh, another one that is used only for communication and signing invoices. Uh, so uh, we don't want to uh, put any of these secrets that stores our Bitcoins and uh, Lightning uh, funds. Uh, to the node, uh, to the hardware device. We only want to give out this guy. So then, even if the evil hacker will uh, hack the hardware device and extract the secret, the only thing that he can do is uh, lie about the channels and maybe sign invoices for us. Well, not a big deal, right? Uh, so then we just pass the secret to the hardware uh, and we can use it to generate any amount of secrets for invoices as we want. We just hash it together with the index that we are incrementing uh, and we get different invoices. Um, yeah. Uh, let me try to actually show how it works. Uh, as I said, you don't need anything but a few words uh, and uh, solid stereoway really that connects this bad signal. Well, um, I don't know if you will be able to see what is happening on the touch screen here, uh, but I will try to show you. So, um, maybe first, 
So Yeah, so this guy currently doesn't have As usual, there may be a demo effect where nothing really works, right? So to prevent this, and you know what to do. Please, 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 please work out. Okay, uh, I suppose I need like a few seconds to plug in, to plug it into my computer and fix it. Uh, but, yeah. So what should actually happen? Uh, no, I don't think that I need a battery. I think that I need something worse. Uh, I was, as I said, taking it. Oh, please, come on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, finally, it works. So, uh, right now, the lamp is off, well, almost off, uh, and the uh, device is showing the QR code, uh, the lightning invoice. So, what we do, uh, we just use uh, any lightning testnet, because I don't have a running mainnet node, because I'm too scared to put my funds there, even one million Bitcoin. Uh, a clear wallet, for instance, a clear wallet works pretty fine. So here I have uh, 69 million something something Satoshi. Uh, and I am scanning this QR code. Yay! Uh, that I need to pay to toggle the bad signal for 100 Satoshi. I pay, I get it paid, great, so now my lightning node in the cloud, or actually Bruce Wayne's lightning node, uh, got the, uh, the money. And in return, I got the pre-image uh, that uh, I need to enter here. I don't need to enter the whole thing. Uh, basically, I generated this thing in such a way that it starts with a uh, numerical, four numerical kind of pin code, and then there is other stuff that is CCDT, and then uh, some random things that uh, you don't really need to enter. So then, uh, I type in enter the code. Here I got probably a different secret, so 4099. 4099. Then 4099099. <laughs> oh, come on, finally. <laughs> and we will get a Batman soon. Uh, to turn off this thing, I can do basically the same. Sorry that it took so long. I just finished it a few hours ago. Uh, and uh, yeah, everything is uh, super non perfect. But uh, so I will turn off the lights a different way. Not with the lightning payment, but for free. Um, so what actually happened? Um, we sent the money to the node in the cloud. Obviously for that we need an internet connection on our phone. But we can use a normal uh, lightning wallet that uh, everyone has. We don't need any kind of uh, application or website or anything that is custom. Uh, then in return we got the secret code that we need to enter to get our goods, call Batman, or get Coca-Cola, or a beer, or anything. And the node can be, uh, the hardware device can be anywhere. So it actually will work offline, as soon as one of the parties has uh, online connection. Uh, ideally, you should be able to do it when both of the parties are offline, if you have a direct channel with the hardware node, uh, with the hardware device, so like if you have a uh, Lightning node on the hardware device, and you have an open channel, then you can do this. Uh, but uh, it requires uh, checking the blockchain from time to time if the channel is still there or not. Uh, also, you need to uh, have a custom application or something to do this, so it is a little bit more complicated. But I suppose right now, at least 
on every phone we have on internet. Uh, if you can also add the internet to the hardware device, then you don't even need any lightning or Bitcoin uh, library for that. So you can just directly talk to your web server. So uh, normally I think that centralized stuff is good as soon as it simplifies, simplifies everything. But in some application you actually want something uh, that works with Bitcoin on the hardware. Uh, one more thing that I can imagine, for instance, that uh, if you have your Trezor that stores your key, uh, Ledger that stores your key, so both of them are used in the multi-signature scheme, and you store them in some secure boxes somewhere in the bank and at your mom's house in the basement, uh, and then you want to accept more. You want to give your friend your Bitcoin address and you want to make sure that this Bitcoin address is actually yours because he's going to send you, I don't know, uh, 100,000 euro in Bitcoin. Uh, normally what you do in this case, you plug your hardware device and you make sure that the address that you see on the screen and the address that you see on the device is the same. But if these devices are uh, stored somewhere, what you can do, you can just uh, make a simple hardware wallet like this that will work uh, store already your public key and show these addresses for you. Uh, or uh, there may be any other uh, applications, I don't know. Uh, we can just uh, try different things and see. Uh, so that's actually the end of my talk. Uh, as Mikhail said, I want to announce the workshop that will be roughly in November. I don't know the dates yet. Uh, and there I uh, suggest to build some kind of hardware that works with Lightning and uh, Bitcoin. Uh, ideally, well, it may be a hardware wallet, it may be something different, uh, it depends uh, of your choice basically. Uh, and uh, probably to arrange this, we need to communicate. Uh, so you should write me with the suggestions, and uh, I need to prepare to buy the hardware and uh, things like that. Uh, but uh, I think it would be nice to um, populate the world with a little bit more. Uh, hardware devices. Uh, also, it would be nice to have a competitor to Ledger and Trezor, because why, uh, why not? Uh, uh, plus, yeah, ideally we would uh, support the Lightning at some point, and uh, also help Trezor and Ledger uh, also to support Lightning. Uh, but it's kind of in the future. Uh, but for now, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>